Hey Canucks fans, do you expect Josh Levo to be back with the team next season? I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clay Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCBC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take, it's Clay's Canucks commentary for Wednesday, June the 10th. This is where you get Canucks insight that's both positive and timely. But before I get to that, I want to give you some good news. You may have seen this on Twitter last night if you were up late. But I won my first ever bowling tournament last night. Now, a couple qualifications. Um, it wasn't a massive tournament. It was only 40 people. And it was a doubles tournament. And it was called High Low. So basically, I can explain it to you very quickly. They rank all 40 players, 1 through 40, according to your average, and then they basically um, match up number 1 with number 40, number 2 with number 39, number 3 with number 38, i.e. the best and the worst, and second best with second worst, so on and so forth. So I granted I was probably 5th or 6th from the bottom, so number 35 or so, so my partner was 5th or 6th from the top, obviously. And then they throw away the handicaps, right, or the averages, because that was the whole point of doing that, that uh, matching up exercise, and it's just total score. So we, we played four games each, and we won with a total of 1617, 1,617 pins, average of 202 per game, which is pretty good. Well, my partner, he bowled a 226 average, which was a few pins above his average, like he's about a 210, 215 bowler. But I bowled a 178 average, which is actually better than any of my Tuesday night uh, formal league. So I don't know why it took me so long, or maybe COVID was good for me. But yeah, I am in my first formal... Uh, bowling back i bowled a 178 average which is 25 pins above my 153 average so he did well as he should as a top five bowler i did well considering my bottom five ranking and that's why we won so i pocketed a massive 55 dollars in net earnings right 25 to enter 80 uh, 160 for the winning team so i get half of that 80 and um, it was a lot of fun for those of you that enjoy bowling uh, enjoy bowling or you see me post clips of my kids bowling i have no form whatsoever it, like it's okay but it's not great at all i don't have a proper release i don't have good spin like my two sons and even my daughter kayla i just go with pure power and pure pin action but that pin action won me 55 dollars last night so thank you for letting me talk about that for the last minute or so, because uh, or minute and a half, because it was it was a pretty exciting day for me, and uh, we'll see if I can defend my crown next week. But it'll be with a different partner, maybe depending on who shows up. Okay, let's talk about Josh Levo. As much as I'd love to talk about bowling for the next five or six minutes, let's talk about Josh Levo. I, we talk about him because we know he's a UFA this year. He's making one point five million dollars on his contract. It was a one year contract because he's an RFA. He was an RFA coming into this season. And we know that he suffered that unfortunate broken kneecap against uh, Vegas in December. I was at that game. That was that kind of dirty, ugly uh, hit from behind. He slid in the boards, the dasher, and, and banged his knee against the boards. And they said two to three months. But now, as I've talked about uh, a few times, it's been six months now, and he's still not close to returning. So there's a good chance that, unfortunately, he doesn't um, make it back for the qualifying series or the playoff rounds if the Canucks advance past Minnesota, which we think they will, of course. Well, I think they will. And it's really too bad um, because they said two or three months, but it looks like it might be six to eight to nine months, whatever it is. And, of course, you can't rush back from a broken kneecap. I, I would suggest that the knee is very important when you play hockey, given that you're skating, pivoting, turning, all those things. So um, it's really unfortunate because he can be a, um, a great asset to our team, right? He can play up and down the lineup. He, I wouldn't call him a first liner. We wouldn't need him to play on the first line, but he has filled in on the second line before. And I see him uh, actually a lot on the second line. He was playing with Horvat for a bit last year, sometimes with Besser. But, um, you know, I see him as a third line guy, but he would be a solid upgrade, I think. Um, you know, or at least, uh, certainly not a downgrade, at least an equivalent to a Roussel or a Jake Vertanen on that third line. I wouldn't put him in the fourth line role, but you could. But you could play him on the third line for sure because he's got a decent hand. He's got really good hands, actually. A good release. He's got good hockey IQ. He's strong on the board. You know, bigger. He's not massive, but he's a bigger body. So overall, um, all those things... That's why Canucks fans really liked him. And he was having an excellent season. He had 19 points in 36 games before he got hurt in December. That's basically a 0.5 points per game. That's outstanding. That would put him in the top 10 in the Vancouver Canucks. So again, 19 points in 36, in 36 games. And that's after last season, he had 18 points in whatever, 45 games. So under 0.5 points per game after he got traded here. So he got traded here in December of 2018 for the immortal... Michael Carconi, who um, I would respectfully say is a career AHLer. So for that one-for-one -one swap, Carconi for Josh Levo, 
Um, obviously, Josh Levo uh, needed to get out of Toronto. They, they didn't have room for him with all their young stars. So it was an excellent trade. And actually, I think it set off uh, a series of really good trades by Jim Benning. You have the Levo for Carconi. You have the Pearson for Goodbranson. Of course, we know about the JT Miller trade that we're all happy about. So there's been a few trades recently that I think um, uh, the, the tight. Tyler Toffoli trade. So there's four, right? All four top nine forwards. Levo and uh, Pearson and Miller and Toffoli. Four of our top nine forwards, you could say, all coming in trades in the past two seasons, which has been, been excellent. So Josh Levo comes here December 2018, performs very well in the second half of the 18-19 season, and then has a great start to the 19-20 season and then gets hurt. Now, when he got traded to us in December 2018, he was finishing off a $925,000 contract. So that contract ends, then we give him a one-year deal as an RFA, he, and goes from 925 to $1.5 million, a very nice, uh, healthy raise there. So the big question is, what's going to happen next season? We know that the salary cap is going to be flat. It's not going to increase. And we know that there's kind of some other priorities we have, named Jamie, uh, I don't know if I said Jamie, um, Jacob Markstrom, we have Tyler Toffoli. I'd say those, you put those two guys at the top of our list. Then uh, I say blow them. You have to figure out what to do with Tanev, with Stetcher, with Vertanen. You know, all these, none of, it's not like all these guys are going to come back. And then I'd say sixth or seventh on the list, you have Josh Levo, who is a pending unrestricted free agent. So the question is, what do you do with them? And do you indeed sign him? If you sign him, what are you signing him for? If he continued on his pace of 0.5 points per game, we're, that, that's better than Jake Vertanen. And we're talking about two and a half, as people are talking about two, two and a half million, three million even for Vertanen. So imagine what Josh Levo would command if he was completely healthy. Let's say for argument's sake, it would be two and a half to three million. Maybe that's a little, I don't know if that's high or low. Who knows? Because it's so hard to say. But that was if he was going full bore and, and having a really good season. He only played half the season, unfortunately. Not even half the season. 36 games only. And he might not be a factor in in the return to play. So that really hurts his bargaining position, unfortunately. And it's too bad because he's a really good guy. So what do you do? If you're a Canucks, do you offer him a one-year deal? And do you expect that he'll take it given that he'll want to prove himself? He'll want to show that he's healthy. The Canucks probably won't want to um, devote, if anything, more than a year to, to Josh Levo. But maybe Levo will take that one-year contract. And I talked about this last week when I talked about Chris Tanev suggesting that many UFAs may have to take simply one-year contracts because... Um, because of the financial situation that the league is in after COVID. And there might be a lot of these one-year show-me contracts and Josh Levo might be in that position. So tough to say, if it were me, I would find a way to bring him back. You know, especially if you move on from Vertanen or Stetcher or Tanev, you're going to have to have guys that make under $2 million. And would you argue that Josh Levo would not stand to make more than $2 million because he was at one point five, but his season got cut short? Again, not his fault, but that's the reality of the game. So if it was me, I would try and negotiate for Josh Levo to come back at the same amount, one point five. I don't know if he would go for that if they'd want a little bit more of a raise or maybe they would understand that uh, there's a bigger payday down the road if he performs well. So that's what I would do. I would see if I could bring back Levo for one more year add a million and a half as well and solidify our, our bottom six. Um, and then hopefully you can get rid of a couple of redundant contracts like Sutter or Erickson and free up more money for the big fish like Markstrom and like Toffoli. So there we go. That's my question of the day to you Canucks fans is, do you think um, that Josh Levo will get a new contract with the Vancouver Canucks? And if so, for how much and for how long? Leave a comment below. I love to read, react, and reply as always. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Have a great day. The Bowling Champ is out. God bless and go Canucks go.